Hey, Math 31, I had a question coming out of section 6.4, number 49. And this one's pretty intense. They're saying, hey, here's the graph of a function. Can you get me the equation of that function um, using log base 2 as a parent function? So let's take a look oops, at what we have here. Um, and now keep in mind, any log function, it takes on this form. Um, a times log base B of X plus C plus D. And there's a lot of letters in there. Um, and so let's let's break them down, right? A is going to be the vertical stretch or um, or shrinking, right? B is your base. C is going to be your horizontal shift, either left or right. And then D is going to be your vertical shift up or down. And let me erase those arrows. And let's start to think about how we can um, fill some of these in. So initially, they told us our base was 2. So I get to automatically say this is A times log base 2 of X plus C plus D. So I, I can at least start there and fill in one of my letters. And it always helps to know what your parent function looks like. So if I'm talking log base 2, right, I would have an x-intercept at 1, 0, right? Actually, let me write that a little further away. Um, I would have a vertical asymptote at x equaling 0 because that would make my argument 0. We would also have the ordered pair 2, 1. All right, so we would have uh, like I said, 1, 0 as an ordered pair, and then 2, 1 as an ordered pair. And the first thing I notice when I take a look at this function is that it's it's reflected over the y-axis. So here's what I mean by that. That if I were to take a look at this function here, and imagine reflecting it over the y-axis, and I'm going to erase those two, I would actually have something that looked like this, right? And that shape matches the shape that I'm looking at. So when you have a reflection over the y-axis, right, this graph was reflected over the y-axis, we have a negative symbol that gets put inside the parentheses. So, and this is back in section 3.5. So this would turn into a times log base 2. This would technically be a negative of x plus c plus d. And that, again, that negative symbol that's right here is become is coming from the reflection over the y-axis. All right, so with that, the other thing I would notice that if I reflected my parent function, right, with its x-intercept at 1, 0, if I reflected it over the y-axis, I should be at negative 1, 0. That should be where my x-intercept is. But if you look at our graph, our graph has an x-intercept at 0, 0. Right, so on our graph, our x-intercept is here, meaning that our x-intercept has been shifted one unit right. So I have a horizontal shift of one unit right, which is why I'm going to be plugging in an x minus one there. All right, so let me go ahead and simplify our equation. So now we're looking at y equaling a times log base 2, and I have this negative here of x minus 1 plus a d. So if I, I'm getting closer, I know my, my B value was base 2. I know I have a horizontal, excuse me, a, yeah, horizontal shift of one unit right. I also have a reflection over the y-axis. But I'm getting closer. If I could figure out what A and D are, I would be done. Now, just to simplify this a little bit more, I'm going to um, distribute that negative in my argument. So I'm looking at Y equaling A times log base 2 of this would be negative X plus 1 plus D. And now let's start looking at other ordered pairs. So other ordered pairs, well, we still have our original 0, 0. I'm going to plug that into my function, and I also want to plug in negative 1, 1. So the two ordered pairs I'm going to use to figure out the a and d values are 0, 0 and negative 1, 0. So let's try plugging in the origin first. 0 would get plugged in for y. I'm going to plug in 0 for x and see what comes out. All right, so if I simplify this, I have zero equaling, and let me just put a little division, or a little barrier there. So we have a times log. Okay, so this argument is gonna turn into log of one plus d, but we know whenever our argument is one, this entire term here is gonna be zero. So ultimately I get zero is equal to d. So I've got my d value now. So to just summarize where we are at this point, now I know that y is equal to, oops, that's how you write the letter A, A times log, oh my goodness, let me erase that and start over. Y is equal to A times log base 2, and then we had in here negative X plus 1, and then since my D value was 0, right, that's what we just found, I'm going to leave that off. 
So the next thing I'm going to do now is plug in this other ordered pair of negative 1, 0. So let's plug in 0 for y, and I have a times log base 2, and this would be a negative of negative 1 plus 1. So let's see what we're looking at. 0 is equal to a times log. Oh, actually, it's not 0. Gosh, I, I just realized I can't read ordered pairs. So give me a moment. Let's let's go back here, and, <laughs> and I'll remind myself that this, oops, this ordered pair does not have the coordinates negative 1, 0. If I want to actually talk about that ordered pair, this would be the ordered pair negative 1, 1. And I realized that just now because my math wasn't going to work out. So let me erase this. I apologize. So this should have been a 1 here. All right. And so now that I, I've got that straightened away, I'm going to go ahead and figure out my argument. So negative of negative 1 is positive 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So this is log base 2 of 2. And whenever the base of your logarithm and the base of your power are the same, the only thing that survives would be this exponent up here. So this becomes 1 would equal a times 1, which again is just a. So I, I'm getting my a value of 1. So that all means that if I simplify this, I have y would be equal to 1 times log base 2 of negative x plus 1. And that's why you see me writing that answer there. All right, so there were a lot of transformations. So just to be clear, we had to first, we had to think about how we reflected over the y-axis, all right? And when we reflected over the y-axis, that put that negative symbol there. All right, and then we had to use these two ordered pairs, and let me go ahead and highlight them, negative 1, 1, and 0, 0 to solve for a and d respectively. All right, and so that took us a little bit of time. And that's how you go from a graph to the equation of a function. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.